We are in the US, it's the 1980s and people are being tested for AIDS. The common test is called, enzyme-linked immunosorbin assay, or in short, ELISA. The accuracy of the test is defined by its sensitivity, true positive, which is 93%, and specificity, true negative, which is 99%. The prevalence of the disease in the population AI is estimated at 1.48 people per 1,000. In Bayesian statistics this data is called the prior. Our task in this exercise is to try and answer the question, what is the chance that a person who has just tested positive in an ELISA is indeed infected with HIV? Quite a few people not familiar with Bayes' theorem think that it is 93%. As we will soon see this common belief is very far from the truth. So let's do the math. Let us illustrate the problem space using this event tree. The person being tested enters the lab at the root of the tree on the left. For now there are only two possibilities, either this person actually carries the virus when he or she enters the lab, or they don't. Let's choose the upper branch for the first case, people who actually carry the virus. We know from the prevalence of the disease in the public that people on this branch are part of a group that makes up 0.148% of the population. We don't have any new information at the moment. So PA is defined accordingly and PG is the complement to 100%. So again, these are the priors for our calculation. One could also say that 0.148% is the chance that a person you meet randomly on the street in a city in the US is indeed infected with HIV compared to the rest who are healthy. This person, belonging to the sick group is now at point A, and going through the ELISA test. From here onwards there are again two options, because the answer comes back either positive or negative. Since the top branch of the tree is for people we know to be sick, the probability of the ELISA test producing a positive result is the true positive of 93%. So the second top branch must be 7%, which is the complement of 93% to 100%. The edges to the right of A and G are the results of the test and in terms of Bayes' theorem are called the likelihood. If, however, the person who just entered the lab belongs to the healthy group which is 99.852% of the population, we are moving along the lower branch. And after point G, the test will come out either positive with a probability of 1%, or negative with a probability of 99%, as per the specificity of the test. Now, we are mainly interested in the probabilities of nodes C and E that cover the two positive result outcomes. Since the event of our person entering the lab and the ELISA test are two separate events, the probability that this person tested positive is simply the multiplication of the probabilities of the two. This comes out as 0.13764% and 0.99852% respectively for points C and E. All that remains now is to calculate the ratio of the percentage of people who got a positive result and that we know enter the lab already infected, to the total percentage of people who got a positive result. This ratio is in fact Bayes' theorem. And the surprising result is, 12.1%. Much less than the 93% that people not familiar with Bayes' theorem would have answered. But note that 12.1% is certainly higher than the belief we had before the test was done, so for those who received a positive answer, it updated our prior belief that they had a probability of 0.148% to be sick, now we believe it is 12.1%. And the important word here is, believe. Because all we have is still just our belief that the 12.1 number is correct. And for those who are not convinced yet, here is a schematic demonstration of what's behind it all. Suppose we have a population of 100 people, and we know for a fact that two of them are sick. This is equivalent to saying that the prevalence in this population is 2%. Let us also assume that the sensitivity in this simple example is 100%, meaning that the test never fails to identify a sick person. Let us also define the specificity at 90%, meaning that we will have 10% false positives. So, we have 100 people going in for testing. Two came out positive because they are sick and the sensitivity is 100%. But there are another 10 people who came out positive due to the specificity being only 90%. So in total 12 people are coming out positive. If you happen to be one of these 12 positives, there's no way to tell if you are one of the two sick persons or one of the 10 healthy ones. You all came out positive. 
The only thing we can say is that the likelihood that you are actually sick is 2 divided by 12 which is 16.7%. Much lower than the 100% sensitivity but also higher than the 2% prior. This is Bayesian statistics, and I'm sure that based on the two cases we analyzed, few would argue against the results that we got. Let us now introduce the concept of Bayesian networks. In 1985 Professor Yehuda Pearl, a graduate of the Technion in Israel who was already living in the USA at that time, decided to turn the tree of events and probabilities into a network. This network would have nodes representing events and system states, and lines connecting them indicating causal relationships between them. At each node, the Bayes theorem acts as a status calculator, factoring each of the states of that node, conditional on the probabilities of each of the states in all of its parent nodes. Because of the algebraic relationship between the probability of A given B and the probability of B given A, in Bayesian networks the analysis goes in both directions, even if there is an arrow between event A and event B that is affected by it. So if we know at a certain moment from an experiment or observation the state of node B, the calculations would also project back to the values of A that would cause B. So, although there are arrows and they are important, the entire grid must balance, similar to spreadsheets such as Microsoft Excel and others. Bayesian networks are also known by their full name, Bayesian belief networks. In our case, the two-stage tree is replaced by two nodes, one representing the conditions before entering the lab, and one representing the conditions after the test. In essence, although we have only two nodes here, this is already a Bayesian belief network. We can read the probabilities associated with each state in each of the nodes. On a practical level, there are a number of applications that help build and run Bayesian belief networks. The most popular of those is Netica which we are using here, developed by the Norsey Software Corporation. Note that in addition to the two main nodes, we have created a third passive node, which is just a reflection of the second node, only with a different name to clarify the process. Now, we can use the network instead of our tree to answer the question, what is the likelihood that a person who left the laboratory with a positive is indeed sick? In Netica, all that's needed is a mouse click on the state that says negative on either of the nodes ELISA blood test or exiting lab. This immediately enforces a 100% probability to positive in the second node. Look now at the value of the node entering lab that must exist for the test to be at 100% positive. 12.1 And of course it matches the result we calculated manually, because Bayes' theorem resides inside both nodes. So we see that we can use the network not only for representing the world of ELISA testing, but also to experiment with specific scenarios as we did just now. There is much more to show, and many more possibilities with Netica, but let us use the time to also show very briefly, how it is possible to take this network one step further, and turn it into a very unique decision support tool. To illustrate that, let us imagine for a moment that already back in the 80s, there were ways to treat AIDS patients similar to what we have today. Let us not bother with the whole picture of how effective the treatment is and possibly other relevant parameters. But just to illustrate how our small network can be the basis for a decision support tool, let us choose arbitrarily only two out of several parameters, the first will be the risk involved, and second, the cost of the treatment. And once our network becomes a decision support tool, my question to it will be, shall I do this treatment or not? Or, if I'm a doctor, should I recommend this treatment to my patients? With the introduction of a special decision node, our Bayesian belief network has turned into a Bayesian decision network. We have also added another new node, which is not mandatory, but often used in decision networks. This is the utility node. While the decision node is very similar internally to other nodes in the network, the utility node is unique as we shall see shortly. At this time, the probability values for the newly introduced nodes are a default 50% for each of the states. Netica enables to change these either by dragging with the mouse the bars that are adjacent to the values to any new position, or by enforcing a one-time 100% status with a single click as shown earlier. Let's see what happens when we play a little with the probabilities of each state in both nodes. After moving the bars on both nodes, you can see on the decision node that the previous nearly identical recommendation of 17% for both yes and no, has now shifted in favor of getting the treatment. 
But if we now move the upper bar on the cost node to increase the cost of the treatment, at some point that reverses the decision from yes to no. The secret of where these decisions come from, lies in the structure of the second player in the decision module, the utility node. It has four columns on the left, one column for each parent node, and 16 lines for each of the possible combination of all the states in its parent nodes. Column 5 has values associated with some selected combinations on the left. It doesn't matter if not every line has a value associated with it, however, only lines that have values will be considered in the decision. The values themselves can be any number that represents a level of conviction that the decision that appears on column 3, whether it's yes or no, is a good decision for that line's combination of parameters. To illustrate how this works, look for example at the fourth line from the bottom. What this line actually says is that for a combination of low treatment risk, low treatment cost, and positive result from ELISA, the preferred decision is yes. The conviction that this is a good decision was given a rating of 90 by whoever configured this utility node. Let's look now that the top line which has the following combination, high treatment risk, high treatment cost, and a positive result from the test. Here, the person who defined the value in column 5 seems to have felt that even though the risk is high, and also the cost is high, still, a positive result is not something to be ignored. However, unlike the previous combination where the risk and cost were low, the conviction that yes is the right choice here is understandably only 75, less than the rating of 90 for the previous decision which was easier to make. Now let us look at the fourth line from the top. Here, the treatment cost is high, the risk is high, and the result from the test is negative. Few would argue that under these circumstances, a decision not to start the treatment seems logical. But why did the person who configured the utility node rate the conviction only at 50? We need to ask this person, but we can guess that it has something to do with the worry about the sensitivity of the test. As we recall, a negative answer still leaves a 7% chance that it is wrong, and that it should in fact be positive. So perhaps this doubt whether to carry on without the treatment, may have influenced the conviction rating here. From the discussion so far it becomes clear that Bayesian decision networks combine two parts. The first is the belief network part, which is the scientific component, capturing the world, its states, and their relative likelihoods. The second part, the decision module, is a subjective, intuitive component that includes the element of how convinced the user or person who configured the utility node feels about each of the possible decisions. This really lifts the Bayesian decision network above most other decision support systems, that are either focused on data alone, or on personal feeling alone, neither of which represents the true way that we as humans make decisions. One small note on the technical side, without going into the details, let us just mention that the final choice, is the highest rated decision calculated as follows. First, each line that has a value associated with it, is calculated as the multiplication of all the probabilities of the states on that line, times the line's value for its level of conviction. Then, the scores of all the lines that have a common decision are added up, and that candidate decision is passed on to the decision node together with its total score in the table. The decision node then displays the candidate decisions each with their score, from which we will most likely pick the winning decision. Before we end this introduction to Bayes' theorem and Bayesian networks, it should be noted, that any practical Bayesian belief or decision network will typically contain at least 10 to 15 nodes. Some are much larger. It should also be recognized that the use of Bayesian belief networks in medicine and healthcare is not new. For example, here is a paper from 1999 describing a Bayesian belief network for diagnosing liver disorders. This one is an impressive effort, involving an unusually large 450-node Bayesian network. It was put together at the University of Pittsburgh in 1987, just two years after Professor Pearl published his first article on Bayesian belief networks. Perhaps not many people are aware that some modern ICU monitors are already equipped with an internal Bayesian belief network such as the one shown on this slide. There are many more examples of applications of Bayesian belief and decision networks in medicine, healthcare, and of course many other fields of life. This is not surprising, considering how powerful these networks are, 
and how close their behavior and thinking is to the way humans think and make decisions.